You are listening to episode 60 of the Less Stress, More Fun podcast. Today, we're going to be embracing ambivalence. You are listening to the Less Stress, More Fun podcast. I'm your host, certified coach Lisa Schwaller. Each week, we talk about how you can rise above the stress of modern living so that you can focus your energy on what matters most. All right, let's get started. Hello, how are you today? Uh, yeah, is this the right time to record? I don't know. I mean, I could work on that other thing. It is on my calendar, though. You know, but it's nice outside. Maybe I'll go work outside. Oh, ambivalence. <laughs> today, we're going to be talking about ambivalence. This is the first in a five-part series on how to change. And we're going to be rolling these out. It's December as these are coming out, and they're intended to help you get mentally ready for the new year, whether or not you set resolutions. And today, I wanted to talk about the first part of the change cycle as I see it, which is being aware of, accepting of, and maybe even embracing ambivalence about the change. I call this series How to Change, and the truth is that we know how. We have all of the human knowledge in our pockets every single day. It's really amazing if you think about it, even to what information we had available 30, 60, 90 years ago on any given week. And there's a wealth of information, and we can try different things. Most of us know that, you know, it's not necessarily the how or what we could try. It's all of the thoughts and the feelings we have about ourselves and the change and what we're getting into and what we're willing to live with and letting go of what we know. It's all of those factors that really influence whether the change is sustainable and whether the change lasts. And I love decisiveness. I do. <laughs> in fact, in the in early 2022, I did a whole series on decision making and follow through. I think decisiveness is amazing and that ambivalence is a healthy and perhaps even necessary part of making changes in your life. Let's just start at the beginning. What is ambivalence? I, I always want to make sure that I'm defining some of these terms. A word like ambivalence may be defined a little bit differently depending on the context. Ambivalence is that sense of, I'm not quite sure. Is this for me? I'd like to. I've never been able to make this work before. I'm not real sure. It's the uncertainty that goes with change. And uncertainty around change is part of it. The reason that I start this series off with that is that I think there is a myth that you just need to decide and pick a thing and move forward. And that ambivalence, that uncertainty, the hesitation is just something to be overrun, overruled, ignored. It Sometimes people look at that hesitancy and they think, is that a signal that maybe I've made the wrong decision? Because we never talk about ambivalence actually being part of the change cycle. I've never heard it this way until I encountered a therapeutic practice called motivational interviewing. I have done extensive research on addiction because I think the habits, patterns, and chemistry of addiction is so useful. Having that knowledge about it and having the latest information we have on hormones and motivation and what causes us to do things that are against our best interest, all of that knowledge and information it helps me show up better as a coach. In particular, I find addiction to be very, very interesting just as a topic. So I was doing a, a lot of research into 
you know, there's the the podcasts that I've done on the molecule of more and dopamine and serotonin. And in part of that research, I encountered uh, this technique that is sometimes taught in some therapeutic um, ways called motivational interviewing. One of the essential tenets of this technique is that ambivalence the reluctance is actually an indicator of acceptance of change. Let's just say someone is a smoker and maybe they tell themselves, I know I shouldn't smoke. It's not healthy, but I like it. It helps me relax. It's just part of my routine. They, they have this whole narrative around their relationship with smoking and when they can get to the point, you know, from, you know, nope, this is who I am and what I can do to, ah, you know, I should change, but eh, it'll be kind of hard. That actually is an indicator that their mind is open to changing that narrative, to seeing themselves as a non-smoker. It's an indicator of openness to new identity. So ambivalence is important. And it, that I think is wonderful news. I know I would say, I'm going to get in shape or I'm going to, you know, learn how to do this, you know, craft, or I'm going to learn how to do, you know, I'm going to have a different practice of running my errands or I don't know, whatever it was that I was going to change. And for me, I, I, having come out of a lot of the traditional therapy that was around in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, it was like, oh, if it feels bad, that was an indicator that something was wrong and I needed to retreat and analyze. And I was never told that feeling bad, feeling ambivalent, feeling uncertain is just an indicator. It's just part of the process. It's not neutral. It doesn't say anything has gone wrong. It doesn't indicate that I am on the wrong path. It's just my brain saying, well, this is new and I don't know if I like it. And because brains do that. Well, oh, this is new. I don't know if I like it. So it's part of the change cycle. Let's get practical. When you're experiencing ambivalence, what should you do? I think the response, when it's something we want to change, I think a very normal response is to be like ambivalence, uncertainty, hesitation. You're an obstacle to my goal. Get out of here. We're just going to do it anyway. It's, it's a resistance. And really in the last year, I've really started to understand that when we resist a part of us that's reluctant, we're not really sending the nicest signal. It is not a good friendship move. And I think self-friendship is actually, that is a tremendous catalyst for change. So when you experience ambivalence, notice what your reaction is. So there's your initial reaction, which may come with a, that, the feeling of hesitation, uncertainty, reluctance, and notice how you react to that. Are you tempted to brush it aside, to just steamroll right over on top of it? Or are you kind to that reaction? I would say my suggestion is to notice when you experience ambivalence, if you can just say, hmm. And in motivational interviewing, one of the techniques, and it's something I've really incorporated into my coaching practice, is almost kind of absorbing what they're telling you. Like, I just, I don't know if I'm ready to give up smoking. I, I don't know how else I would relax. Oh, it really helps you relax. Yes. Almost like it, it's, it's a conversational volley that is, it's not necessarily agreeing with it. It's just agreeing with the fact that you're thinking it. I know that's like splitting hairs, but I'm telling you that little extra bit can make such a difference. So when you experience ambivalence, then just uh, kind of acknowledging it, you know, kind of absorbing the energy of it. Like, yeah, you know, this has been a really big part of my life right now. You know, it would make sense that I might feel a little reluctance about whether I'm going to be able to change, whether it's going to stick this time. That seems pretty normal reaction. 
like even imagine the energy of it. Like that is building a signal of strong (laughs) self-friendship. That's a tough phrase to say. Say that that 10 times fast. I'm all kinds of tongue-tied today. Now, you may experience your own change ambivalence, totally normal, totally healthy. And in fact, it's, I think it's helpful to, to even decide that it's a necessary part of change. Of course, I'm going to encounter ambivalence. It's supposed to come along at some point. And other people in your life may have ambivalence about your change as well. All right. That is, that's normal too. Our brains are very sensitive to, you know, whether things are are balanced, normal, predictable, habitual. They're just sensitive to that. And when there's a change in the system, they will let us know. And sometimes the way they let us know they've detected a change in the system is ambivalence, discomfort, reluctance, resentment. So that's something I would encourage you to be aware of as well. There may be others in your life who are going to experience ambivalence in whatever form that shows up for them about your change. And again, because of the way we're wired with our brains and socialized with our cultures, a lot of times we take that as a signal that there's a problem, there there is something that is unstable in the relationship, and sometimes other people's ambivalence will shut us down. But I tell you, and I know I've used some examples, like if you live in a household, let's say you're in a partnered relationship, you have decided you're not going to eat ice cream after dinner anymore. You're just like, you know, I think I've I've had enough ice cream in my life and I'm done. I'm not going to eat ice cream at home anymore. And then your your partner may react to that change by bringing you home all of your favorite flavors, three times as many as normal. And are they consciously trying to sabotage you? I don't know. Maybe. And maybe they're just expressing their ambivalence about your decision. Totally normal, necessary, healthy part of the change process for anyone who's involved directly or you know, in in the same area, in the same ecosystem, like in families. All right, let's go into how you know when it's time to make a new decision. You may decide, like, let's stay with that smoking example. Like maybe you're a smoker, you want to quit, you've decided, all right, so um, I'm done smoking. I had my last cigarette, you know, this morning, and you are just going to go through the physical discomfort of the withdrawal. You're going to go through the mental discover, discomfort of not having your habit. Um, and you're going, you've decided to cur- encourage yourself through all of these different change steps. It's going to be uncomfortable. You know it. You're signing up for it. And then the ambivalence comes. I don't know. It's so uncomfortable. Why is it a big deal? That is one of my favorite change ambivalence. Like, I don't even think I really want this anyway. (laughs) The negotiation with yourself. And I would just offer, if you're ambivalent about a change, of, of just taking that into consideration. But then I would offer that you really do know when you want to make a new decision compared to when you're just changing your decision because you're uncomfortable. That comes up all the time in coaching of, well, how do I know when it's time to make a new decision? And as a coach, I love when we ask a question, I love to give it back. When your brain asks you a question, give it back. How will I know if it's time to make a decision? And I would say, well, how, how will you know? Like how, how have you done it in the past? How, how would you know it's time to actually, it's not just ambivalence, it's you deciding that this change initiative is no longer for you. How would you know? And most of the time we have that answer. And if not, that is a beautiful invitation to continue to be a friend to yourself, build yourself trust so that 
you always know you can trust yourself to give the answer that feels right for you. All right, this was fun. I love talking about ambivalence. It's this concept has completely changed my life. It's something when I bring it into coaching, it it really can change the course of change initiatives. People come to me a lot of times with a goal or goals that they want to meet. There's behavior changes that they want. They want to create something new. And introducing the fact that ambivalence is part of the process, it's often a game changer, big time. All right, let's go into your invitation this week. Your Coach Lisa invitation is to think of a change process in your life, whether it's one you're in the middle of now or one that you're planning for, and reflect on what ambivalence you may have about that project, or are you just like, oh, this time it's going to be different and you're hoping there won't be ambivalence. Just get to know what comes up for you and and for fun, just think back to a few other things that you've done either. And I would say, look at changes you've tried that didn't stick as it were and changes you tried where it just became part of your new identity and just reflect on how did I encounter ambivalence? How did I navigate it? What can I learn about what strategies work the best for me? All right, that is what I have for you today. And we are going to have four more episodes in this series on how to change. And next time we will be talking about how you can use your feelings as fuel. Wow, wow, let's go. Have a great day. Thank you for listening. If you're enjoying the podcast, please rate and review wherever you listen. This will help other listeners find the show and bring less stress, more fun out into the world. Thank you so much, and I'll talk to you next week.